Uh, I'll tell you my story. Uh, I'm not very much older to you guys. Uh, my name is Manit Gohil. I started this company from a hostel room in 2014 January uh, with a single mission of creating livelihoods for the artisan. Um, today we are a team of 38 people. We are based out of Noida and Bhavaneshwar. Uh, we have 1200 artisans with us from 8 low income states whom uh, we provide livelihood every single day of the year. Uh, we, uh, Moreover, we supply the products to close to uh, 300 plus uh, retailers, uh, namely Fab India, Zara's, as well as um, Reliance and Anita Dongre. We have been fortunate to be part of the Suidhaga movie as well. Uh, and over 18 countries, we have been giving the products. So I can tell you about my story. Uh, I'm more of an average kind of guy uh, throughout my engineering, throughout my MBA. And, um, and the change is the next constant. Change is the only constant. So uh, maybe I will just talk about that as well, uh, how we have been able to pivot, what was the perseverance and the motivation for us. Uh, last year at this time, uh, literally uh, we were a team of 6 people, uh, today we are a team of 38 people, last time at this time we were doing a revenues of close to 5 lakh rupees a month, today we are doing a revenue of close to 50 lakh rupees a month. So that's how we have been able to scale our business. Uh, I can take you to my roots uh, from where I belong to. Uh, so I come from a small village uh, in Maharashtra called as Amalner uh, in the Jalgaon district. Uh, that was where my father grew up, uh, that was where I grew up um, and uh, I am a Gujarati. Business runs in my family. Uh, my father uh, graduated from IIT Madras and that made my life little tougher because uh, everyone wanted to expect that, uh, that this is uh, a kid of an IIT and typically he will do much better and beyond uh, what my father has achieved. But I think, uh, uh, I think I was not able to do that great. Uh, so yeah, I think there are some problems with this images. It's not picking up the images. Okay, no problem. So uh, that was uh, how it is. And uh, today I'm going to talk about the evaluation of passion. How, uh, how, uh, how I have defined passion for myself of what work I do. Uh, and typically I was always an average kind of guy, I went into an average engineering college, I did an MBA from an average college, it was not an IIT or not an IIM, but I think there was a drive throughout the times uh, which was pushing me that I had to do something valuable and uh, as I entered in the first year of my engineering college, uh, so I moved on quickly and in the second year of my engineering at DC, I felt that I need to find something extra. So I went into spiritualism and I thought that I will go to an ashram for two months in Bangalore and I will see what these guys are doing. Because I, I met a lot of uh, uh, my teachers from Art of Living who are from IITs and XIMs and what is it that they are going back again and again to the ashram. I went to the ashram and I think as bare as the question marks over here, I was actually clueless. You can see my photograph over there, I was figuring it out, what, the, what are they doing? And uh, but okay, but that was part of it. I think it didn't click to me that moment. Um, more importantly, as I was growing in and I was coming in the third year of my college, uh, I happened to see a lot of movies which inspired me. And I think something which I would also recommend you to see is uh, Crocodile in Yangtze, which is a story on uh, Jack Ma. It's very beautifully done. It's very inspiring. Along with that, uh, movies like Into the Wild and Forrest Gump were the ones which keep on exciting me, the hamos in me, which were like the gray cells in my head, that these are the guys which are doing some real stuff. And I think that was what motivated me to define what passion is. Because I think typically uh, what I, in the millennials and the age group of which we lie in, the biggest problem I identify is that we do not know what passion is. And uh, it's very important to redefine or define what passion is actually, what it is meaning, what is the meaning of passion and what it can bring a change into you. I was so much motivated and uh, I actually got carried away. I thought in the fourth year, in the third to fourth year, I actually directed a movie along with a few of my friends. And the movie, uh, we got some sponsorships from Red Bull, from DD Bharti, from some of our alumni, alumnus from uh, Delhi College of Engineering. And we, we created a movie, full short movie, 50 lakh rupees we spent on creating a movie for close to uh, three months. So I think that was the moment and uh, when we realized that the movie happened, but what next? Because we failed miserably, we didn't know what to do with the movie actually. Because uh, it was not getting any money for us. Anyway, the money was not ours. It was from sponsors. The sponsors were telling what about the movie and we were not able to understand how we can monetize it. I think that was where I realized that uh, there is a problem. And as a normal kid and uh, like a normal kid of this country, uh, we all do engineering. Most of us do engineering. Then we do, uh, do a job. I worked, also worked for a consulting for two years 
uh, based out of Gurgaon and then I had nothing much to do. I was getting it from my job. So I was like shit pain and I said that well, what need next to, to, to be done and I said let's uh, my father told me that you need to go to an MBA. I wrote CAD. I was not able to get into any of the IIMs. I get, went into one of the colleges in Mumbai called as NITI. So it's into supply chain and operations and uh, that was where I spent two of my years in Bangalore in Mumbai. During my days in Mumbai actually uh, one thing which I realized was uh, uh, I was there, was, uh, there was something in my head actually which was going around in terms of passion that what is it which is bringing in passion for me and coincidentally I visited one of the art festivals for e exhibitions for the artisans which is called as Kala Goda festival which is typically similar to what exhibitions in Chandigarh would be or Delhi Heart would be. And I met close to 78 of the artisans from 8 states there I understood their products, what they are selling I understood uh, the price points at which they were selling the products And I realized that the price points at which they are selling the product is too less The products are so beautiful And I, my Gujarati brain actually worked out such way that I thought that this is a huge opportunity Let's take their products to international markets And let's fetch some uh, better prices for them I came back to my hostel, this was the first year of uh, my MBA I came back to my hostel in January 2014 and uh, did a like uh, quick research on it and the research said that in India we have 9.1 million artisans as per the official census which happened in 2011 and which comprises of close to 42% of the global artisan population uh, which is huge on the other hand uh, in India the contribution to handloom and handicraft market is uh, less than 2% the global market is 400 billion dollars so India's uh, contribution is to just 2% less than 2% which eventually means overall that 42% of the global artisans are just contributing 2% of the business which is a huge disparity I think that was the market opportunity which I wanted to tap in actually and I was passionately driven to do this I went across so this is the exhibitions uh, uh, where the artisans typically used to sit and I think that was the moment when I realized that this is the passion which I would have to follow and because there is something which is very important is the impact because it's about my journey my passion but at the other end and i am constantly giving sustainable income to a lot of artisans which is a lot of the passion driven from their entire community and it's a two-way objective wherein i am also having a lot of fun but at the other end i'm creating a lot of livelihoods among the artisans that was when i realized that uh, i need to create an impact and this is the space wherein i would have to work this was in 2014, I didn't have any lot of money, my father used to give me 10,000 rupees a month and I would have to just figure it out what to do next. Uh, this is the first photograph which I took uh, of any of the artisan clusters which I went to. So 78 artisans, I remember, I remember I just mentioned about 78 artisans from the 8 states uh, I met at Kala Goda. I visited all of them in their villages. And when I went into their villages, uh, I found that there are so many of them, their brother, sisters, uncle, aunties, everyone doing handicraft. The entire village is doing handicraft. There is a huge potential for handicrafts. And uh, I thought this is interesting actually. And this rare products like these were in hand, handmade paper diaries uh, where they are selling at 25 rupees, which easily someone can get give 200 rupees in an Archie's or a Fab India maybe or something like a paper uh, uh, car, a pen stand holder as well as the photo frames and uh, you, you, th these ladies I still remember they told me that we want to earn money because our uh, husbands typically drink uh, throughout the day the rice fennies in their, this is in the village of uh, Pata which is in the district of Oraya in Uttar Pradesh and we also have uh, this thing uh, radios and phones uh, in our society uh, like in the community of small village and they have they realize the potential of the bigger urban cities the only objective to earn money was to send their kids to the urban cities so that they can be a, have a better life they not wanted to uh, their kids to pursue or live in the same legacy of their own towns and villages this was a huge problem i further went on to a lot of other villages these are the photographs from those days wherein i met a lot of other artisans i think i realized i came back to my hostel room and i said that this is something which i would have to do now that this is what i will do i will bring all of these artisans on a single platform similar to what flipkart is i was naive and i was an idiot so i didn't realize that what is uh, it to be done or needed to be done in terms of bringing in business for these people so i created i started coding a website i took like literally three three and a half months to code a website i was never able to make a website i was i'm an electronics engineer i never studied engineering in my as you could have seen that i was into music and spiritualism i never studied engineering and moreover i didn't have any knowledge about what i can code a website 
like i thought okay so let's uh, check the website i'll just maybe give it to someone else and i will started writing uh, blogs so that i will create blogs and create good content so that uh, the stories the one which i mentioned about the pata village would go much more viral and a lot of people would know about such kind of products but i was bad in writing as well and i thought that i will let me work on photograph and photo edits and i was bad at everything actually and i realized that i how can i take this up actually because i was like very helpless the next thing i what i did was that i got a i got some sort of 15000 rupees from my friends from my own savings from my which my father used to give every month and uh, i registered my company as a private limited entity on my grandfather's name i registered the entity as a private limited entity and the beauty is that as you register your company as a private limited entity i was in the first year of my mba Uh, immediately i can register myself as a company which can look for placements in a lot of other institutes across the country right for summer interns interns and other things and uh, in a no matter of span uh, i was reaching to all the iits all the iims all the nifts uh, national institute of fashion technologies and ids as well as uh, a lot of other schools as well and uh, and i was reaching out to them because i would give them a certificate and they will give me an intern and in a span of close to 3 weeks we got around 800 entries or applications for interns and i was like wow i have a team of 800 people but i would have to shortlist the best and i circulated the 800 cvs among my friends and asked one of my friends to create a letter head uh, so he was the one which makes typically posters like all of these in like fests and all those things so i get here make a poster for my company and that would be typically the letter head of my company and we'll give certificates to all the interns so we got a span we got around 28 interns from six states from i am rotax mdi fms we had xlrise interns we have interns from iit jodhpur iit bombay iit delhi we had from dc iit madras and from everywhere we had all the interns the best brains working for me i was not at all capable of working or thinking of what they would be able to do right so so now i have a team which was writing blogs which was doing a lot of price sensitization in terms of what price we can take a product there was a team from iit bombay which was constantly dedicated into working for and developing the website all for free so i think that was <laughs> so so that was the best thing which happened for us uh, during those days so this is a screenshot of typically uh, from february till august uh, 2014 of uh, the weekend life project internship kind of thought which i sent to all the people and then they replied to us uh, but yeah so uh, the disparity is that everything was happening well in my life i had a team i had a startup which was running everything was cool about it people were topic talking about it but uh, i was never able to convince my parents my parents said you need to go to a job this is not something which you have to do and this is uh, so you have a job and you are into a good mba college you get into a job and all those thing so okay i said okay so so i i'm from a uh, typical middle class family so i have to obey what they they say me and i went into job so i started working for uh, flipkart in bangalore for close to one and a half years uh wherein everything actually in my brain was for lalten throughout the one and a half years i was still figuring it out answers where we were going wrong what i could have done better in flipkart for lalten and i think that gave me a lot of uh, sensibility in terms and maturity in terms of what business i would have to carry carry forward to and uh, during the days we work used to work for flipkart and during the nights uh, we used to work for lalten so there was a lot of uh, less space for us in, in terms but but that was a passion through which we were driven to take this off by we mean i and another my co-founder uh, which is which was my roommate at the flat and he was he was telling manit you are crazy you are working the day at flipkart and you are working at night for lalten i said come come and let's work for lalten he got so much passionate about lalten that he also became my co-founder so that was from the apartment uh, we used to run our uh, startup and uh, then uh, this guy came in my life and uh, and i idolized him like a lot so uh, so so he one of the quotes he said uh, that uh, Uh, if you want to achieve something in life which is great then you need to get out of your comfort zone time and again and you need to challenge yourself and surprise yourself with the challenges so that that, that then only you will be much more successful in life i think this somehow struck with me um, i realized that this is something which has to be done so the next moment which because my flipkart job was comfortable every fridays in the office they used to have party and uh, there was not a lot of work so and they were paying good as well so 
but i think i had to had to move out of my comfort zone wherein there was no salaries uh, thing and my father told me that no you cannot leave the job this is something which you need to uh, do uh, be in job for the next 3 to 5 years and then understand uh, and then you start another other things do start your startup but yeah so after this i was very sure that i cannot uh, do both either flipkart or lalten i would have to do only one so which was definitely lalten so the next moment i quit the job i didn't tell my parents that i quit the job my other co-founder my flatmate also quit the job he both quit the jobs so we changed the laptop wallpaper to steve jobs <laughs> <laughs> he said he said this is the inspiration this is our inspiration so uh, let him this is on all on him so we'll just uh, be motivated uh, with him and that was how it was working out and then they were, we were then uh, passionately driven to create an army for artisans we were we there was no plan b for us actually because there was always a plan a that uh, we will never go back we will still struggle to see what is to be done for the artisans and for this entire and this is a huge business opportunity as well which is was untapped this was my bangalore apartment uh, where we closed to for 18 months we ran our startup all bootstrap we didn't had any funds uh, i along with my two co-founders in the day it was an office in the night we used to sleep over there and uh, and uh, there were a lot of aunties boutique owners which used to come and we used to show them all the sarees but loose blouses and i was being an engineer i didn't know all of this but i can guess which sari she is wearing i can tell from where the f- fabric has come where the threads have come where that which dye has been there because that was i was passionate about i used to go to the clusters and used to understand i can touch a fabric and tell where from where it is so i think that was what we learned in those 18 months and i think it was sheer perseverance which stuck with us during all those days in bangalore uh, which is the strong, very strong foundation for us the three co-founders and the people who join us today because they are driven by our passion and our motivation more than uh, the salaries and other things which we give them uh, in a matter of span of what we were doing uh, uh, we were so as you are not funded you have your own savings there's a hole right in the pocket which is always draining out because we are not making a lot of business back then so we were participating in a lot of international and domestic competitions and the good thing about it was that I, uh, we were very lucky though uh, i and my other co-founder sanchit uh, we won literally each and every competition in india uh, we won iit bombay eureka and ahmedabad master plan you name it and we have won it actually and uh, in a span of 2 years those 2 years uh, when we were there in bangalore we got a equity free cash prize you get need a, you win and you get a cash prize right so it is all equity free and we got around 18 and a half lakh rupees of cash prizes we have won oh. events so and we have won events in san francisco we have won events in uh, new york washington dc paris in minimum uh, college in india we won it uh, given the condition they need to have a bigger check prize right so we we used to so we used to go there and just win it and we were so confident that uh, everything happened so well for us uh, this made us a uh, lot visible for the community as well and the pr we got featured uh, by one of the uh, uh, publications in san francisco as well as by local and the newspapers as well as uh, international newspapers and publications like the entrepreneur magazine and all those stuff uh, but something was, was still wrong actually with us because we were the, like running crazily madly for something which was we wanted to do but we were not making a good business out of it like 5 lakh rupees was not something which we have left our jobs for and uh, we needed to make a change and as change is the next constant change is the only constant i think this is where it came so one of the competitions uh, was being judged by i ex ceo of itc and he told us uh, he basically judged us to win the competition we gave him the card next day he gave me a call and he said to stop doing what you are doing you otherwise you are you, you are actually going to fail but i said that you we made us win yesterday sir so he said no no you are going to fail this is miserable you are doing you are actually jeopardizing your careers so he said that whatever you doing is wrong do b2b pivot your model entirely and i will mentor you guys for the next 12 months we'll have calls once in every month and i will monitor what you guys are doing but you if you want to ag- agree with what i say uh, then do this i said okay and uh, we discussed among our co-founders and we said that we'll g- go entirely b2b from today and he gave us a deadline of 100 uh, clients uh, b2b clients uh, by the e- end of that year and uh, we had 124 clients serving in 12 countries then and uh, 
and it was primarily because we were driven to it actually because we had to prove him wrong and that we he was he was he had i think he had in his mind that these guys cannot do this and uh, we had to prove him prove, prove him wrong and literally for that one one and a half years we didn't sleep at all uh, in our bangalore apartment because in the night we were making calls to all the boutique owners or all the businesses in melbourne or london or los angeles of the world and in the day we were calling to the indian people and there are a lot of call cold call, cold calls and cold mails which we used to do throughout the time so i think uh, that was uh, the sheer uh, perseverance which stuck with us and the hard work which uh, was there with me sanchit and albin which was the third founder actually which came along with our journey um, and it happened good for us uh, today we are have uh, close to 300 plus buyers wherein we have been exporting to around 18 countries and we are buyers like anita dongre and then hotels like four seasons hilton uh, brands like itv wells lifestyle fab india we uh, gave uh, products to sui dhaga movie as well um, for the promotions and all so yeah so this is uh, my team so so we, as we have been growing uh, we came from bangalore to noida uh, that the same guy who mentored us the ex ceo of itc became our first investor and uh, we then raised our first investment round uh, very recently we closed another investment round for a lot of foundations from us as well as in germany and in, then again investors in india but i think the most important thing was that everyone is driven by the same passion not only us by employees as well as my investors because they seek that there is something this these guys are doing something next and uh, uh, my team is traveling across the country today we are impacting close to uh, 1200 artisans every single day impacted around 6000 lives across eight states uh, in the last one year if i say and uh, we help them in terms of understanding uh, designs of what Uh, contemporary design a buyer in us would want because these guys have been making traditional contemporary traditional designs throughout the time so i think that's where uh, we have been uh, focused to work on and yeah i think everything is working fine i think this year is lucky for us because we got it featured into forbes 30 and the 30 as well uh, we closed a round of a series a uh, couple of months ago and uh, we have a pool of right investors mentors who believe in what we are doing and uh, constantly supporting us with uh, whatever needs we have with covering more than 6000 artisans uh, getting livelihoods every single day of the year i think and uh, that's what the focus is something i didn't mention was that i was a black sheep in my house because my father was an iit and i had never been able to crack iit or any of the other good colleges though but i think uh, as an average student like me i think if i could have been able to do something which i wanted to do i think there's a lot of potential in lot of us sitting over here because uh, i think age is not a number maybe and as well as experience i think if you're driven to a passion i think you can just do it i think just go go gaga about it i think you don't need to think second twice about it I think that's what we have been able to do and thanks a lot for hearing me